just go through the same thing we did last time. Welcome everyone to the Learning Clinic on CKLU 96.7 FM. I am your host, Bob Kerwin. And with me this afternoon, we have Hannah Perrinen, who is running for the position of counselor in Ward 10. Hannah, welcome back. Well, thanks for having me back, Robert. Yeah, so Hannah uh, was in uh, once before earlier. I can't recall the exact date, but this time what we're going to do... it was January 12th. January 12th, really early in the, in the <coughs> process, I know. This time we are videotaping the recording and uh, when we are uh, complete and, and it's uploaded um, sometime by tonight or tomorrow morning, uh, people will be able to, to listen to the entire uh, show at their leisure and uh, I will always have it available at thelearningclinic.ca and, and Hannah was free to uh, link to it as well from his website. So uh, this afternoon Hannah, could you bring us up to date a little bit, just, just a little bit more of your background, because for people who didn't hear uh, our show in January, um, to, just kind of tell them briefly who Hannah Perrinen is, and uh, then we'll get into some of the issues and why you're running for the position of counselor. Uh, yeah, be glad to, uh, Robert. Uh, um, my name is Hannah Perrinen. Um, uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Sudbury. Uh, I grew up in the Minnow Lake area and I went to uh, school here, uh, to Laurentian uh, University. Uh, then I went to uh, Carleton and uh, uh, York University at Osgoode Hall. And so I have a uh, law degree and uh, I practiced law uh, in Sudbury for a number of years. Um, but I left that in the mid 90s and I pursued uh, uh, another career in uh, property management and um, uh, owning, owning of park buildings and running them basically. Um, and I've been a long time volunteer. I started um, my volunteer career uh, with the Sudbury Finnish Restaurant Society in, in the 80s. I was there for about 10 years. Uh, moved uh, into, um, I was uh, uh, a board member of uh, Network North uh, for a number of years. I was on the executive committee. Um, I was also on a, uh, on a steering committee uh, uh, to amalgamate uh, uh, the North Bay Psychiatric Hospital with, uh, with Network, Network North. Uh, then I moved to um, uh, another housing organization, uh, the uh, Sudbury Native Housing Board. Um, I was there for, again, a few terms. I was a treasurer. I um, was proud of my time there. And uh, then I've, uh, the last seven years, I've been on the uh, Sudbury Public Library Board. And uh, for the last two years, I've served as chair of the library board. Uh, as well, I was appointed um, uh, the honorary Finnish consul for uh, uh, for Finland for Sudbury in um, 1991. So I've served as uh, honorary Finnish consul uh, for 23 years. That's it in a nutshell. So in a nutshell, yeah, in a, in a big nutshell. So 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 really, you had a, an awful lot of different um, backgrounds. Uh, experiences in a really wide variety of things that really come to the council table. Yeah, and that's why I think I have a unique uh, skill set and uh, that I can bring uh, to the city council. I've I've worked with uh, people basically all my career. I've worked uh, with different levels of government, uh, uh, municipal, provincial, federal, and uh, foreign governments, so uh, I'm giving that experience to the city. And, and I've got a, a little bit of a background in, in law and, and collective agreements and labor law more than anything else, but it, it seems as if we are walking a tightrope so often today in, in, in all aspects of life, but for sure in, uh, in government, um, on the legal uh, 
arena. I like that. There's, there's so much now that's, that's involved that deals with the law and legal rights and uh, it, it's, it's almost as if you're, you're afraid of making decisions for, uh, for, for lack of uh, uh, knowledge of, of what your potential legal liabilities are. So, I mean, are, are you noticing that? Because with your law background, uh, you look at things a little bit. Yeah. Well, we've always, uh, our society seems to be evolving into a more litigious society, which I don't think is a good thing. Um, also, we're always worried too much about legal liabilities. And that makes us afraid of of doing things that we should be doing. It's almost a parallel. Uh, we're, we're paralyzed. Yeah, there is a paralysis there. And uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think if you understand the legal process and how lawyers think, which what we're supposed to be trained to do when we go to law school, uh, is that uh, it's not as scary. Um, and um, so uh, bringing a legal mind to city council, I think, would be a good thing. There hasn't been uh, uh, a lawyer or a legally trained person on council for many, many years. I think uh, uh, Jim Buga, Jack Caldarelli, um, that was in the 70s, the 80s. I can't remember anybody since. Hmm. Your, your background in housing, too, it seems to be, I, I don't want to get into issues that you're going to talk about, but it seems like the background in housing, especially with the uh, um, the, 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 the rest homes and, and the senior apartments and things like that, it, it seems that that background uh, could serve you well on council as well. Yeah, uh, well, housing uh, for seniors, for, uh, for anybody, for, yeah, disadvantaged, uh, the, poorer sections of uh, society, are, those are issues that are very dear to me and I, I, I understand the issues and uh, I, I understand how to, uh, how these uh, projects are, are funded, how they're built and how they're run. So let's get into some of the major issues that you've seen developing, like, like I know we met back in January which was early in the process, and I know that anybody who's running has probably done a lot of thinking about whether they're going to put their name in, in the hat, because this is not this is not an easy job that you're applying for, and so if you're going to put your name in to serve on city council, um, it's going to take a lot of time, it's going to take a lot of background uh, reading and, 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 and a lot of research. So. In the time since January, and we're, we're now into May and the provincial election looming, uh, are, are there certain issues that you're starting to see come to the surface that yeah. are more important? I think what I've been trying to do, rather than, um, let's say, we say there's too many potholes and let's fill out potholes, that's, a, that's a, an issue. But you have to look at it on a broader sense. Tran let's say trans transportation, and then from that heading, all sorts of sub issues flow from that. So uh, the in infrastructure, road infrastructure, yeah, it's obviously it's not in uh, very good shape. It's not in good repair. Why? Uh, we have to. Sometimes there's um, you know gut reaction that uh, uh, they weren't uh, properly built in the first place or uh, the standards that uh, were used or weren't being followed or, or whatnot. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, those have to be addressed in a, in a, like in a systematic uh, fashion. It's just not uh, a sense of going out with a, a shovel and filling the, you know, the potholes. You have to look at it on a global yeah. uh, picture. I've been asked uh, personally to, to try and explain how we can solve this transportation infrastructure problem and how we can solve some of the, uh, the major issues. When we take a look at transportation, it seems to me as if that that's a huge problem that we may not be able to control entirely on our own because I think we need we need some help 
mm -hmm. from the other levels of government. Uh, have you come up with any silver bullet solutions or any crystal ball uh, explanations no. as to how we can get out of this? Unfortunately, there is no civil, uh, silver bullet uh, county for this uh, issue or for any other issues. And I think people say that they have a, a silver bullet or a, a, an answer that's going to be a, a prob a hundred percent problem solver. I think I don't think they're telling the truth. Um, we know that we have a one billion dollar uh, infrastructure deficit. And that's certainly not going to be solved in uh, one term of uh, one year council, let alone a term of council. It's something that uh, uh, money, extra money, has to be put towards um, uh, uh, fighting back or uh, this infrastructure, uh, cutting back the infra uh, infrastructure deficit. So we have to spend more each year. Otherwise, we're going to fall farther and farther behind, uh, and that goes leads to different issues. Is that uh, are our financial resources uh, capable of, uh, of sustaining our infrastructure, and uh, if not, why not? Uh, is it uh, our ta are our taxes too low? I don't think so. I don't. Nobody has told me that. They're not paying enough taxes. Uh, basically, everybody is saying uh, we're taxed to the hilt. We can't afford any more. You gotta, you gotta uh, do something. Um, find other revenue sources. Um, and I think that's we have to explore more revenue sources from the provincial and federal levels of government, as well as uh, finding new revenue tools to raise more money. Uh, uh, to address uh, these infrastructure uh, deficit problems, uh, as well as uh, we have to um, we have to spend our our money uh, in a very uh, prudent uh, manner. Um, I think what we have to do is it's uh, in, in a uh, a restaurant uh, a waitress has to have smart serve. Well, we have to have smart save and smart spend. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the, like, we've got James Trigani coming in after you, and like, when, we're, when we're dealing with infrastructure and we're dealing with finances that have, we, we have to get some help from the other levels of government. One of the problems that they sometimes come up with that they present us is, it's the matching of the funds, where if we come up with a certain amount the province would come up with a certain amount contingent on the federals coming up with a certain amount. So it's almost like you have to have three people dancing together. And the Maley Drive extension is a perfect example where apparently we have the money put away for our share of the 26.7 million and the province is willing to put theirs up. If the federals put up, the feds put up theirs, but we don't have any equipment from the feds, so we're stuck with 26.7 million in, in, a, in a reserve that we know could be going to fixing a little bit of infra infrastructure, but Mealy Drive Extension is a high priority project. You're into this dilemma where... Yeah, I know. It's, it's a political done. shell game about, uh, you know, one level of uh, government promising uh, funds, but making it contingent on another level uh, matching it. And so you, you're able to uh, give a promise that uh, you probably think that you'll never have to keep, um, uh, and and that Mealy uh, Mealy Drive um, is the number one infrastructure uh, project uh, as uh, prioritized by uh, city council. Now, we, and those funds can't be touched unless that priority is uh, level has changed. Mm -hmm. so, so I mean there there's a there is a problem where the money's apparently sitting there mm -hmm. and it's and you can't touch it unless you change the priority mm -hmm. of that project. Mm -hmm. And if you do that then you don't have the money to match 
with the other levels of government for, will give you. For another project. And, you, and in the meantime, while you're waiting, the cost of that project is soaring so that mm -hmm. the original 26.7 may not be enough to cover it. Well, it's like a dog trying to catch its tail when it, uh, you know. It just keeps spinning. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I can see where uh, each council that comes in is kind of faced with this dilemma of knowing what the problems are, because this infrastructure problem didn't happen overnight. Yeah. And, and all council can do then is try to find a solution to the problem why are we having so much trouble finding solutions? But we have to get to the, uh, also, is it just a, a funding problem? Like, I mean, is it just that uh, now, now it, it's a funding problem, but you're, you're absolutely right. Why did we get into this problem? Yeah. Uh, is it because, are the roads uh, not built up to the proper standard for uh, Sudbury and Northern Ontario, mm -hmm. or do they meet those standards? If not, if they do, well, maybe the standards aren't high enough. We are, um, maybe, know. Maybe, maybe our cycle's too long. Well. Or maybe, maybe our, we expect them to last longer maybe, than they Exactly. They should. If we're saying they're supposed to last for 20 years, but they, we know by just looking at it and anecdotal uh, evidence uh, that they only last 10 years, well, uh, you know, you have to start from the beginning. So we're, the really beginning. we're really causing trouble for future councils if we don't do something right the first time. That's right. They should do it right the first time. And if it costs more money to do it right, well, so be it. Mm -hmm. So so I can see that this whole infrastructure, and it's not just the roads, it's the, it's the sewer and the water. Well, it's, it's like everything is just kind of coming together. Yeah. And we have a lot of... Uh, systemic difficulties that are, and challenges in Sudbury that many other uh, cities, uh, especially municipalities our size, we're 160,000 people. Uh, that's a, uh, it's smaller than a, like a medium sized uh, large, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, uh, but uh, it's, the challenge is that geographic, and uh, we have a small uh, population in comparison to the size, uh, uh, the geographic area that uh, are to be serviced, uh, all the infrastructure, and th that will, isn't going to change in the, in the short term. Uh, so we have to. Uh, struggle with those problems uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. I've been hearing a lot of people tell us, or t tell me that, that what they see as a way out of this is getting back to the basics. And for uh, uh, the future anyway, the, the immediate future, concentrating more on the basic services that we're supposed to be providing. And while we know that we have to to do certain other things to uh, ensure the growth of the Sudbury area, that there's certain things that we probably should be spending our time on right now because we've got a leak in the boat, and if we don't solve that leak, we're not going to be going very far down the lake. Well, politics is always uh, uh, making decisions and making priorities. So I'm not sure where you're coming from and what what everybody has a different idea of what a, uh, core services are. Some people have a very uh, broad definition, mm -hmm. some people have a very narrow definition. So, you know, what's your definition? Uh, good question. I mean, I, I've heard people saying that we should be spending all of our money fixing the roads and the infrastructure and, and forget about all of the, uh, the desires to have multi-use complexes and art centers and everything else. And, and, and then you you got the other hand, well, well, if you don't deal with making this a good place to settle in the future, then you're going to lose your the, the, your tax base. It, it's, it's one of these things that you can identify what's core, and as you say, some people are going to say certain things are core, certain other things are not core. We, we are faced with that. We're faced with a, a revenue and an expenditure problem, and we've got a huge deficit uh, that's been building up that has to be dealt with. But... At the same time, where can we put our time and energy and our money? You know, 
I, I don't know what the answer is. It, it's but these seems to be questions that are coming up, and it's like, wow, uh, I'm not sure what the answer is. Mm -hmm. I'm running for this position, but I'm not sure what the answer is. I'm hoping that I can. I've got the the skill set to discover mm -hmm. answers, and and that's why I said at the beginning yeah. of the show. It seems like you're coming in with a lot of a, a real varied background and talking to a lot of other candidates who have come into the studio and doing the interviews and it seems like there's there are a lot of people now that have a lot of different backgrounds and skill sets and, and it's like they all have to be mixed together mm -hmm. at the city council table and work together and, and there's another issue that we yeah. that, that is, is coming to the front you know how do we develop a, a a culture around that city council table where everybody is working in unison towards solving the problems. And, and I'm very excited about uh, the new council and, the, and the, the new mix of people that are going to be on the council. Uh, there's going to be probably around a, a half of them are going to be new councillors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a rough estimate. There could be more. Uh, more than that, um, but we know for sure that there's quite a number of, of uh, there's vacancies and, and other people are, are choose, going to choose not to run. So, um, but that's the great thing is that uh, um, we're going to have new people with, uh, I think, new ideas, but a desire to, to work get together and, uh, and shake things up. Because I think there has been that feeling of, of stagnation, I suppose, and or that feeling that council doesn't have the right chemistry, and uh, so uh, I think there's going to be desire to to try to to work together. So, so what you seem to be alluding to, and it's something that I I believe myself philosophically too, is that you can have the same ingredients mix them differently you're gonna have two different cakes mm -hmm. when it comes up mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily uh, important that that everybody on council be changed or that it's all new people it's just a, a different way of mixing yeah and and you can mix so you figure that that there might be a half and, and half would be a significant change mm -hmm. in the chemistry wouldn't it well definitely I mean it's People it only takes uh, whether there's 13 people on yeah. council, yeah. and so uh, seven votes uh, can determine an issue. So uh, uh, it won't take a lot of uh, people to uh, to change uh, to um, to really shake things up. Uh, and this is the last thing uh, I would do is. Um, Denigrate or any any person. I think it's just how they get uh, how they relate to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, different personalities uh, uh, will uh, um, uh, uh, um, what was it? Different personalities. Would react to different situations uh, uh, according to uh, different circumstances and different uh, set of uh, people on the council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's it may not take that many people to, I guess, affect the change because it seems as if uh, everybody who's putting their name in to run for the position, whether they're incumbents or whether they're new. I don't think anybody ever runs for one of these positions with um, the wrong intention or with the intention of doing a bad job. It, it's just things happen mm -hmm. and, and, and life happens and the situations that are, are coming up uh, are, are uh, so critical now. And, and the interesting thing that we've got, the dynamic we've got with the 12 different ward councillors is that you have to remember you're representing your constituents. Right. Um, I, I've been asked uh, how should a person vote uh, for the uh, store hours bylaws at the referendum and I said you know if the referendum isn't 50 percent um, I think a ward councillor has to look at what the vote was in his, his or her ward and, and 
And if, if that ward uh, voted one way, I really think it's your responsibility when you're sitting at that table and, and that issue is going to get decided, whether it's decided by referendum or there's another motion put forward. The councillors are going to have to do that. I think you have to vote with the way your, your constituents are. Should. I've already put that on my website um, uh, as my position because um, I don't necessarily agree with referendums uh, out there on every issue, but we do have a referendum, and that's a, a, a form of direct democracy, um, and it's uh, it'll be a, a a decision one way or the other, and I'm going to uh, drill down into the results of my constituents in my ward, mm -hmm. and I will vote uh, how the majority of the people in my uh, my constituency or ward voted. Yeah, and, and I think that gets down to the heart of what responsibility does a, an elected councillor have sitting at the table mm -hmm. uh, governing the entire city of Greater Sudbury. There's, there's the two schools of thought where you have to represent your ward but you have to think about what's good for the city. I, when, when I'm balancing what my level of responsibility is, I, I think my, my priority has to be my ward constituents, but then it's my job to make sure I know what my ward constituents want me to say. Well, to. That's, but there's a rub there too, uh, because um, you don't know. You hear uh, how they think on the street, or uh, how many emails you get, but unless uh, you have a uh, an opinion poll on every question, you don't know for sure. And have, uh, so you do have to use your own judgment uh, to make these decisions. And, um, and that's why people are uh, electing you to represent them and to make the hard decisions. Right. That's what you're being paid for. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's a, it, it is a fine balancing act. Yeah. Because it's, it's a... I mean, on the one hand, you're right. Uh, you're, you're you're dealing with what you're hearing from the emails and from the people you're talking to. But and, and I can't remember exactly who was that said it. But but a piece of advice from a, a very experienced politician was uh, uh, make sure you hear the silent majority. Mm -hmm. And and it's 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 kind of one of those pieces of advice that okay, how do I hear the silent majority? But it's true that mm -hmm. that you don't. You're not often hearing what the majority wants no. from from the people that are actually being vocal. Right. So it's um, it, it's and it gets I guess it kind of segues into this whole accountability and transparency issue. Those are two words that yeah. I mean if I if I've heard it once I've heard them a million times. But yeah, they've been banding around uh, so much and nobody really. Uh, uh, knows what they mean, it's, except that it sounds sounds good. Uh, of course you have to be accountable, of course you have to be transparent, but um, so what we need is uh, real uh, accountability. So if you make a decision, uh, you should stand by the decision, you should have reasons, you know, cogent reasons why you, you, you did something. Um, uh, uh, transparency, uh, the same. You can't uh, hide from your your decisions. You have to be open with it. And what I propose to do, if I'm elected, I, I'm going to put as much uh, material on on my web web page uh, 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 to explain my actions. Uh, and uh, let's say, let's say just one small example would be like uh, expenses. Okay, I just instead of uh, waiting for uh, for the clerk's office to put uh, the expense reports out, well, I can put out the expense uh, reports once a month rather than wait uh, three months. You know? Because I I I just want people to know that that uh, 
were out there uh, working for them, uh, and uh, uh, it's it's it just makes common sense to me. Yeah, I agree. We're gonna take a a, a quick uh, break and then come back and and cover some of the issues that we haven't covered yet because we've been kind of going all all over the place, but. I um, just want to remind everyone that you're listening to The Learning Clinic on CKU 96.